What is going on, guys? Today, we are getting back to it with a versus battle, something I haven't done in a decent amount of time. I don't know why I don't do these more often. People really seem to enjoy them. I, I just don't really know who to do, I guess, in these versus battles. So if you guys do want me to do more of these videos, make sure to comment on this video on all my videos, people you'd like to see me do versus battles for. So yeah. Today we are going to be talking about two top Yonko commanders, Katakuri from the Big Mom Pirates and Marco from the Whitebeard Pirates. I've actually already done this versus battle before, but I did it like 18 months ago or something, pretty long time ago, and the Katakuri vs. Luffy fight wasn't even over yet, so I really had no business doing that. I don't know why I did. I missed a lot of stuff because he hadn't used all of his abilities and whatnot at that point, so I think it's definitely worth doing again. I actually have like four or five versus battles which have Katakuri in them, and they were all done before the end of the battle, so I... I I don't know, maybe I'll redo some of them. This one I definitely wanted to do though because they're two of my favorite high level characters. I also think it's a pretty interesting versus battle because the two of them, at least as far as I've seen, have really wide ranges of the power levels people put them at. A lot of people think Katakuri is like the strongest Yonko commander and a lot of people think he's the weakest, at least top Yonko commanders that we've seen so far. And the same can really be said about Marco. So since Marco was first introduced in the story, let's start with him. He is the top commander of the Whitebeard Pirates and the user of the mythical Phoenix Fruit. The exact extent of what the Phoenix Fruit can do is kind of unknown. We have a pretty good idea of what it can do, but not to what degree, I suppose. What we have seen, though, is quite powerful. Marco can turn into a phoenix, which is basically just a giant bird made out of flames at any given time, and he even it can go as far as to only turn parts of his body into it, which seem really effective since he is able to like just make wings and then still use his feet to use a kick or something like that. That might sound kind of weird, because if he's made of flames, then wouldn't it be better to kick when he's in his phoenix form, so he'd be kicking with the flames? However, according to Oda, apparently, he actually can't do damage with the flames, it's just how he regenerates. So if he gets shot by a bullet, or if, you know, something we've actually seen, he gets shot by a laser, then he regenerates by just turning into flame and then his body's like back to normal, all good, no problem. This is what I mean when I say we don't know the exact extent of this ability. I mean... Basically, a phoenix is supposed to be a bird that dies and then comes back to life in a fiery way, right? But, okay, I mean, I don't think he can just die and then come back to life. That seems a little too overpowered. Unless maybe that's like an awakening or something, I don't know. Wouldn't really make sense for a zone, but it is a mythical zone, so it's really hard to say. Oda has said that there is a limit to how much he can regenerate, but not exactly what that is. Basically, there's some limit there, but we don't know. We have seen him do quite a bit of regenerating, going against some of the most powerful characters in the entire series, so we can assume that it's a pretty high amount. We've also recently seen that he is able to use his ability to heal people, which is kind of interesting, but I don't know if we can really count that in a combat scenario, because first of all, he already is healing himself, right? Like, when he's self-regenerating, that's just healing. So, I don't really think that tips the scales or anything. So that's basically it for what we can say about his powers. What comes next is his feats. What have we actually seen him do? And this is the part where people start to get upset with me for whatever reason. The first time we really get to see him in action, he is defending Whitebeard from Kizaru. Kizaru is launching this massive bomb of a ton of different lasers and he is just flying at them, taking the damage and not really caring. He doesn't actually take any damage because he regenerates. I mean, of course, you know, there is something to that because, again, he can only regenerate so much. Not sure how much that is. But I think it is important that he is more than okay with just absorbing, wasting this endurance that he has. And then he gets up to Kizaru, kicks him, and then with his momentum completely stopped, launches him across the battlefield into a wall, which is basically destroyed. Now, a lot of people see this scene for some reason and go... Okay, you know Kizaru was joking, right? He was just screwing around. Okay, besides the absurdity that that statement would imply, there is no evidence of that. You can't just say, well, he's this weird character, he has his unclear justice, and make these insane assumptions with no evidence whatsoever. Maybe you are right. It's definitely a possibility that he was just joking around. But there is no evidence to support that claim. So until there is, I'm not going to just make that assumption. I'm calling it as I see it. Marco just did a number on Kizaru. 
I'm not saying that he would win in a full-on deathmatch against Kizaru, but he certainly was able to do something quite impressive there. That is by far the most impressive thing we ever see from him, which is really good again. But then we do get to see a little bit more of the War Abyss. He kind of just destroys some fodder people and holds his own against Kainu and Aokiji. He doesn't really do anything too crazy, but it's not like they're overwhelming him too bad which is really impressive because the Admirals are some of the most powerful characters in the entire series. Okay, so we've talked enough about Marco. Let's move on to Katakuri, the user of the Mochi Fruit. The Mochi Fruit, surprisingly, has a very wide range of capabilities, basically being able to do everything the base form of the Rubber Fruit is able to do and more. He is able to extend parts of his body. He is able to change the size of different parts of his body. He is able to use his Awakening to do a lot of crazy things, such as make his surroundings turn into Mochi, as well as you do these crazy floating peerless donut things that just beat the shit out of people. On top of his Devil Fruit powers, he has to have some of the highest defensive stats we've seen out of any character so far, considering, first of all, he is able to make it so he can move different parts of his body, kind of like a Logia, but he's technically not a Logia, so he's able to increase his dodging by quite a bit, as well as the fact that as far as we've seen, as far as we know at least, he has the strongest observation hockey we've seen in the series so far with a really advanced future sight. He is not able to just slightly anticipate people's movements and whatnot and be able to like know where people are with his eyes closed. No, he takes it to the extreme. He's actually able to see events in the future. The original number was like five seconds and now it's pretty unclear because he think, sees things that are like way more than five seconds in the future, but either way, it's super crazy. Combine those two stats together, and yeah, his defense is going to be off the charts. He's barely ever going to be hit. In the Luffy vs. Katakuri fight, in the beginning, he basically was not getting hit. It wasn't until almost the end that Luffy was even able to scratch him. Observation hockey isn't the only thing he's good at either. He's not quite as good at armament hockey, but it is more powerful, noticeably more powerful, than Luffy's was during the beginning of their battle, and probably the end as well, which is pretty impressive since we were able to see Luffy use it to quite a high degree in the prior arc. So yes, if I haven't already made it clear, Katakuri is an absolute unit. So then, if the two of them, if Marco and Katakuri were to get in a death match with each other, who do I think would win? Well, because of both of their Devil Fruit powers and Katakuri's ridiculous future sight, I would have to say that both of them have extremely high defensive abilities, so it would definitely be a long battle regardless. I could see them just going at each other non-stop. I think that Marco would certainly have a speed advantage, for one thing because of his flying, right? He can just move in different directions, which is hard to deal with, but he also is flying. Flying is considerably faster than running, I suppose, so he would have it there, but I don't know if he's necessarily going to hit as hard as Katakuri. It was shown that Katakuri's armament hockey was pretty overwhelming for Luffy. He was really taken aback by the power levels that Katakuri was displaying with it, so I'm assuming that Katakuri probably has a little bit stronger of armament hockey than Marco, but I'm guessing it's not by too much, and his raw strength is off the charts as far as we've seen. Being able to launch Kizaru, I mean launch with absolutely no momentum whatsoever. As far as the actual raw physical strength, probably Marco for whatever reason. It doesn't really make any sense since Katakuri is like 17, it was 14 feet tall or something and completely jacked out of his mind and Marco is just kind of this little guy. But I, I mean, come on, we've seen this happen now. So I suppose the amount of damage they do per hit is probably going to be similar with that being said, and I think Marco is going to be hitting a little bit more because of his speed factor that I think he has. And not to mention, if they are even close in the amount of damage they're doing per hit and the amount of hits is close, then we have this whole thing where, you know, Marco kind of just like regenerates. He doesn't really take damage like normal people do. So Katakuri is going to be at a massive disadvantage there. Now, another thing I would like to point out, and keep in mind that at the end of the Katakuri versus Luffy battle, I was the one saying that Katakuri was definitely stronger than Luffy, but at the same time, he wasn't that much stronger than Luffy. Luffy, of course, did evolve a lot in that fight, is probably the most he's ever gotten stronger in one individual fight. However, I think that that is kind of underwhelming for Katakuri when we're comparing him to Marco, who has these crazy feats against the Admirals, again. 
I've said this a million times, I don't think Marco is going to beat any of the Admirals 1v1, but he certainly is performing on their level, and I don't think that Katakuri is displaying that based on his fight with Luffy. So at the end of the day, I think I'm always going to give this one to Marco. I think that he kind of is a decent margin better than Katakuri. It probably would be a mid-diff fight. I mean, he's really got it all. I think that their damage per hit is going to be similar. The amount of hits he gets in is probably going to be a little bit higher than Katakuri, even despite his observation hockey. I'm guessing Marco's is probably pretty strong too. It was made pretty clear that speed is the way to get around Katakuri's insane defensive abilities anyway. That's how Luffy was able to actually close the gap a little bit. So with Marco having that advantage, I think that is way too big. And just based on what we've seen in the story on who, how they've done against different opponents, I think Marco's taking the cake. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about this video. If you enjoyed these versus battles, I think a lot of people do. A lot of people seem to want them more. Uh, a lot of people also seem to like them, but hate when I make them because they think I'm stupid or something so I don't know it's really confusing but I, I, I kind of like doing them so if you guys give me good people to do for it I, I will most certainly do that with that all being said I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day and I'll talk to you on Friday